Hello and welcome to the Smart Attack Podcast. My name is Nick, the EMF guy, Pino, and today I'm here with Jake Steiner. And Jake Steiner, to give you some feedback, it says, oh, semi-retired stock trader and investor. And that's true, but his personal passion is what I'm interested in because he spent the past 20 years studying vision biology science and exploring nearsightedness prevention and reversal methods. And that's the controversial part because I've seen things on the internet here and there that says, oh, can you reverse uh, myopia? And I'm, I'm myopic. I have uh, minus 2.75 and minus 2.5, I think. Uh, and it, it has gotten better in the last few years, but I've kind of followed things on the internet here and there and take breaks and whatnot. So I'm going to ask Jake today all about myopia and especially is tech playing a role like our screen time? So Jake, thanks you so much for being on the show today. Dude, thanks for having me, Nick. I appreciate it. And I'm super glad you wear glasses. So this should be a, an interesting chat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's appropriate. Uh, you used to be minus uh, five, uh, which is... I mean, I thought I was myopic. My, minus five is way more than than I am, if I understand uh, correctly. And I, I don't remember the, the name of the chart, but can you talk about your story and how you were able to reverse that myopia when in reality, most of what I read, most of what I hear, the eye doctors I consult tell me this is impossible. Yeah, by the way, uh, minus 2.5 and minus 2.75, three years. And you're done with those things. Really? Forever. Well, I might get started after they, that podcast. So I'm looking forward to that. They look cool. So you might just pop the lenses out of them <laughs> and just wear them for style. But exactly, I, I can promise you in three years, you won't need those things for anything. And actually, in about a year and a half, you won't need them for a conversation like this because you'll see your computer screen just fine without them. Wow. So just as a little teaser. So... Yeah, so the story is at a minus five. I started maybe when I was 12 or so. My parents were both medical doctors, took me to the optometrist. Uh, optometrist gave me glasses. My parents were super disappointed in it. I was pretty excited because it was a, it was, you know, kid getting attention, getting new glasses, having magically amazing eyesight. And that turned into a whole, I gave up sports. My social life suffered. I became an introvert. Glasses got stronger and stronger. Meanwhile, professionally, I, became a guy who, whose job was to ask questions. And I'm not interested in the stories. I'm not interested in the marketing. I'm not interested in the fluff. I make money finding out what's up, right? So it's, it's not, I'm not a doctor. I'm not an optometrist. I'm just a guy who spends a lot of time going, and then what, and why, and what's the data say? Because if I believe a myth or a nonsense story, I lose money, right? Yeah. So it's, it's very... Just there, there's no space for nonsense because I'd be homeless. And so at one point I went to the optometrist uh, in my adult life, in my 20s, and they said, uh, you need strong glasses. And I was at minus 4.75 or so, really thick glasses. It makes your eyes smaller. The stronger your glasses are, the smaller your eyes look. So I had these little beady piggy eyes and I was a single dude and it was just, no way. They're already super thick on the sides. I'm like, I'm not not doing strong glasses. And professionally, I'm just trained. So I just asked the question, why? Right? Like if you're offering a treatment for this, you tell me what's wrong, right? Like you, you have to be able to explain a cause of a thing if you're treating a thing and in my non-professional yeah. opinion. And they said it's mysterious and genetic. And that pushed a button because I'm, I can't, if you know super basics about how genetics work, you know that the human genome didn't magically change super dramatically in the last 50 years globally for all of us to suddenly not have good eyesight. Yeah. And that, that answer just made no sense. So this was before Google Scholar, before the internet was so simple and amazing for research. I went to libraries because that's what I do for a living, right? Like, and I just researched and I found the cause of myopia being not genetic. And it was a really weird experience because I never had this kind of experience diving into a topic not related to business and money. I, I'm just looking at biology and I'm, I'm fascinated and shocked and confused. Well known, there's 50 years worth of peer-reviewed clinical science explaining what causes myopia, explaining the role of the treatment, which is pretty amazing. And a hundred billion dollar year industry, the glasses you're wearing, 
it's a hundred billion dollars a year making money, not letting you know what's going on. So that was shocking to me. And anybody, I recommend anybody who's curious about this to follow that first, look at the science, just the amount of sciences out there is, is shocking. And I'm never a fan of random people on the internet, or I'm skeptical of random people on the internet claiming that something is just a huge cover up and we can't trust them. So I'm always skeptical, <laughs> yeah. which is healthy. And the idea of reversing it is definitely fairly new and fairly fringe and hotly debated. Um, I've been doing it for almost 20 years. I've got tens of thousands of success stories. A lot of people who optometrists confirmed first hand reports. We've got a big Facebook group. We figured it out, but it's definitely, it's weird for me, right? Cause I'm a mainstream guy. I never really got into alternative medicine or health or any of those things. So yeah. for me to be thrust into this felt weird. I opened my mouth saying things that to me even sound like, oh, come on. Right. Like, but it's true. Like I had my, I, I'm right now we're having this conversation. I'm not wearing glasses. Uh, I just got back from an hour and a half drive, including through the city, not needing glasses, 20, 20 eyesight, no LASIK, no eye exercises. So absolutely doable. Yeah. And I heard, and I mean, I get, I guess we can probably talk about alternatives like LASIK and whatnot. I heard good things, bad things. I'm not too sure about whether I would do that myself if my eyesight keeps deteriorating afterwards. I'm a, I'm, I'm a root cause person and I, I do uh, engage in a lot of alternative medicine and whatnot in, in the goal of, okay, trying to figure out, well, do I, do I have a, a Tylenol deficiency or do I need to find a root cause of these headaches? You know, it's in the end, it, it's that. And I don't mind for Tylenol from time to time. I gave ibuprofen to my kid yesterday, he couldn't sleep and whatnot. And that's, that's all right. But if he has if he needs ibuprofen every single day, I would have a problem with that. Like, why exactly is something broken? So I, I, I think we really think alike. Uh, but okay, before we talk about what you did for you, I want to, what are these causes of myopia? Uh, I, I want to read you something. I, I looked at retinatoday.com. I don't know how valid this is, but kind of a very mainstream article where they say, the exact mechanism of a nice axial or axial elongation is unknown. Genes, I always love it when researchers say that unknown, right? In EMFs, it's like, anyway, it's just, I read that a lot, like environmental factors cause cancer. And I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? And they don't define it. So anyway, genes alone do not account for the incidence of myopia, but they may determine how susceptible a given person is to environmental factors. There you go, environmental factors. So what are these environmental factors? Is it, is it clear in the science or is this still a big mystery? So it, it's shocking to me. And I just, in the last two years, I've really given up on mainstream news before then I was still fine. But the way things have been going, I'm like, it's just shocking. Like the nonsense that's out there. Scholar.google.com, right? It's for anybody who's not familiar with it, it's Google search engine just for peer-reviewed clinical science mm -hmm. studies, right? And I'm not one to say a study isn't truth, right? Like studies are funded by somebody and you can make results look like anything you want. It's the volume of studies. It's the general, how much of this data is being reproduced by different people over different decades of time. Yeah. Scholar.google.com, two, two keywords. One is pseudomyopia, P-S-E-U-D-O, myopia, or more complicated one, but also great, near-induced transient myopia. Near-induced, giving it away, caused by near something. Transient, meaning temporary, and myopia, of course, is short-sightedness or nearsightedness. You're going to get tens of thousands of results of published peer-reviewed clinical science only right? Like no internet, just general fluff of people selling courses, but just, just science, tens of thousands. So it's not like there is a study by, by sponsored by big sugar saying sugar is good. No, this goes back way back. This is the first clue. So the cause of, and a super, super, super short version is there's a lens in the front of the eye that is controlled by a circular muscle called the ciliary. And it works similar to a camera lens. So the, the, the eyeball is a ball, the lens in the front, the retina that, that receives the light signals in the back. 
and the lens in the front reshapes itself depending on if you look at something up close or far away. And the closer you look, the more that, that muscle tightens up to shape the lens, to bring the light in focus for something that you look at up close. The idea there being is when you look at something up close, you have a tight muscle. And the thing is designed as kind of nature intended that most of the time you look in further distance, the muscles relaxed at 20 feet, six meters or so that muscle starts to be actively working. The closer you look at something phone screen, very strong muscle tension. If you do that hours and hours and hours and hours every day, eventually you get a muscle spasm. The muscle gets stuck. So what happens is the eye's not suddenly broken. You didn't just develop a genetic deficiency at a similar age when you started looking at screens or, or books a lot. It's you had that muscle tight for so much for so long that it doesn't fully relax. So it's like if you put a camera in manual mode and you set the focus to up close and then you try to see something different and it's blurry, that's what happened in your eye. The, the muscle is stuck in close-up mode. Mm. And pseudomyopia, right? Near-induced transient myopia, cause of most cases of myopia today. And it's not a question, right? It's not, it's maybe it's genetic, blah tens of thousands of studies. I mean, it's not, it's super clear, super well understood. The muscle is tight. It, it's not fully relaxing. If you give it enough time, it relaxes completely. Your distance vision is restored. So that's kind of the first half of the puzzle. And then the second half, which this article, whoever wrote this has no idea what they're talking about. Axial elongation. So what happens is the eyes, that ball, right? Like it has two mechanisms for focus. One is that, that muscle and the lens. And the other is it's a fluid filled ball and it needs to be exactly the perfect shape for the light hitting the retina to be focused exactly on the retina. Like it's a fraction of a millimeter, which is really hard for flexible biology to continuously accomplish. And the way it does it is the eyeball shortens and elongates the axial elongation. What the, what that guy was talking about is the mechanism that controls the length of the eyeball. Okay. Continuously through your life, absolutely well understood mechanism, including how it works. Um, the short version or the simplified version is the retina checks if any light hits in front of the retina or behind it. If light hits behind the retina, it tells the eyeball it's too short, it elongates. If light hits in front of the retina, the eyeball shortens. It always tries to have the perfect length for the light to hit correctly on the retina clearly understood and not just clearly understood but studied they studied it in fish they studied it in monkeys they studied it in birds i don't know how they put lenses on fish or birds they studied it in <laughs> humans they studied yeah. it in humans and i quote some great studies that show putting lenses on a human eye changes the axial length measurably in as little as an hour so that researcher has not gone online for two minutes to type in axial elongation tens of thousands of studies, again, specifically if you type in lens-induced myopia, and that's the funnest keyword of all of them, lens-induced, so myopia caused by your lens wear. And Wait a there minute. is a- <laughs> Myopia caused by what is supposed to cure it or it's, fix it. I know, and I'm kind of like just walking over this, not building up the, uh, the drama because it's shocking you type lens-induced myopia in the Google Scholar, you get tens of thousands of search results of just peer-reviewed clinical science stating that the minus lenses that you wear in front of your eyes cause the eyeball to elongate specifically because what happens is these lenses are meant for distance vision only. They're super, they weren't invented in the 16th century. Like they're not modern medical science. They refract light to, to move the light further back in the eye for distance vision. And if you wear them up close, when you look at something up close where you don't need them, that some stray light goes behind the retina. And what happens is the eyeball elongates because that's the exact signal that it's intended for. It's called hyperopic to focus that makes the eyeball elongate. So the, the glasses that you're wearing are literally causing more myopia. They know it's in, the, in, in optometry and ophthalmology journals that this stuff is talked about for, for decades. Wow. So research boy, 
I don't know who he's paid by or if he didn't do his homework at all, but this is not, it's not a question. And it's so far not a question that companies that, and I, I used to say this 15 years ago, as soon as there's a patented product that exploits this, suddenly they'll talk about it. Suddenly this mm-hmm. is going to become part of the conversation. And that is, has happened. There is a contact lenses that have these defocus rings in them. And in the, in the sales materials to the optometrist, they discuss exactly this, that glasses cause axial elongation. And then they introduce these contact lenses saying, if you buy these contact lenses, it'll reduce that effect and slow down that whole thing. So this is yeah. super weird because it's not far-fetched. It's not a conspiracy. It's well-documented. But when you go to an optometrist, they just have no idea that this is going on. Yeah, well, that's exactly my, my experience. Uh, what I saw the, the optometrist starting to think about uh, is uh, screen time and the effect of blue light on macular degeneration. From what I could understand, it's still debated whether it's going to kind of deteriorate your, your, your eye prematurely. But do you think that, well, obviously, I think that we can conclude that looking at screens is a factor in kind of making the, the myopia epidemic worse? Because I can think about when I became myopic and I was young, starting to play video games all the time. So staring at a computer screens for, I don't, I, I don't know, never, <laughs> never told this to anyone on air, but maybe 80 hours a week while I was in high school. I mean, like every night for eight hours, like until the night, like with friends who were playing Starcraft and I don't know what, World of Warcraft at one point in uni. And it was hours and hours and hours. Like I I still love it to this day, but kind of play occasionally because I have responsibilities now. But uh, yeah, it was a lot. And this is when I realized, my God, I cannot see anything that the the teacher is writing on the blackboard. And I told my parents, like, I, I think I need to see an eye doctor. And when I put contact lenses on, it, I, I was like getting emotional. I, I think I might, I might've, maybe I was 13 or something like that. And all of a sudden I saw like nature and snowflakes and I was like, okay, I'm very myopic. <laughs> like, I cannot remember the last time I saw this clearly. And it was really, but it, it wasn't fixing the root cause, which, uh, might have been the fact that I stare at a screen, right? So it was just, okay, let's fix it. And we put something magical on your eye. But at the same time, research clearly shows that this will deteriorate my, my myopia, but no one told me that. It's not just maybe, it's absolutely the absolutely. Case. If you're not born with bad eyesight, the, the muscle getting stuck is not a question mark. Like it's yeah. just, there's so much independent science over just such a long 50 years worth. 50 years worth of science that explores this on all kinds of animals, very much including humans. So, and and the thing is, the sad thing is 10 years ago, this was an adult conversation. And now it's a parent conversation. Like 10 years ago, I, I rarely got emails from parents. Now it's every day, every day. And now it's five-year-olds and I always go, okay, is, is a, is an iPad a babysitter? And always. Yeah, a kid is quiet for hours. I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, like my grandparents used to say, you put a little drop of whiskey on the baby's tongue. Baby sleeps really well. You know, like, <laughs> yes, it works. But what are the side effects? Like, uh, you know, a small child's short arms and they have this device in front of them. They, 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 the muscle gets stuck. And then the kid is squinting, like a small child. And then they take the small child to the optometrist. It's a tragedy. Yeah. Right. And then the optometry just goes, well, my, my, my customer base is starting younger now. And mm, with young kids, geez. the progression is really fast. So it, and then it affects the development. It affects their, their social life. It affects their fine motor skill development. They, they become introverted. They become anxious. They have a limited field of vision. They won't play the same. They don't move the same. So they develop completely differently than they would without corrective lenses so this is yeah it's weird because i don't care right like i'm not trying to save the world and i already made money so this is not i have no incentive and and myopia was a rant blog i mean it was just me going because i was pissed and i was just i like to write so i wrote a thing and 
it grew just organically into this huge community that is now. And I'm still like, I'm not trying to save the world, but I'm a parent. And whenever I hear the kids stories, I'm like, this is not cool. Yeah. Right? Like back in the day when you were playing computer games, if somebody would have told your parents, you wouldn't have ended up with classes. Right. And luckily for you, it's on the minus three. It's not that big of a deal, but still we can talk about all the things that you're not doing in your life because you're assuming that's not you, right? Just because this really limits what you are willing to do when your head is wearing these things and your brain goes, whoa, Nick, slow down, right? Like we're not, we're not playing crazy ball games. Things come flying at your head. Like there's just things we don't do, right? And it really affects mm. lots of little details that, that are limiting that the people who wear glasses are not realizing or thinking about, you know, plus all the long-term potential effects and crazy stuff like doing LASIK. Like this is a, it sucks that this is such an underappreciated thing, having good eyesight. Yeah. And I, I do see kids. I, uh, I became a dad four years ago. It will yeah, turn yeah. four uh, very soon. And at uh, very young kids, he, he was playing with even, I mean, I think some of them were two-year-olds with, with glasses. And I, I kind of looked at them and not to judge the parents because they don't know better and they go to the eye doctor and then kids have glasses and the rest is history since the glasses may will will um surely make them worse over time so it means that five or at ten they badly need glasses so i'm i'm kind of lucky in a sense that i started wearing contacts in in my teen years and not in my in in my youth because uh, chances are it would have been much worse for me right now, but I'm always kind of shocked that I see a lot of two-year-olds, three-year-olds uh, that have glasses nowadays. I'm like, I don't recall it being so prevalent in my time. Uh, and then, well, what they got right in the article I cited um, at the beginning of the conversation is they they said, well, myopia is a global epidemic. And I think that's pretty much established that it it is getting worse. And um, is that a fact? And, and I saw South Korea numbers, 90 to 95 percent of high school students, for example. I'm like, oh, my God, it means I mean, we're going towards like 100 percent of the population with myopia, aren't, aren't yeah. we? We are. Um, yeah. South Korea, Hong Kong is over 90 percent school age children. China has a mess from Singapore recognized it as one of the top three health crises in the country to address. Wow. Um, I own a bunch of lens stock you know when i started researching this i mean it's what i do for a living so i was like wow this is a growth industry and i mean i have made a lot of money just holding lens stock right and it sucks it's unfortunate but it's there's a lot of growth there's a lot of growth in in surgery equipment that deals with retina detachment mm. you know that's a couple billion dollars a year now and when you read their their shareholder updates they're excited they're like we're growing there's more retinal detachment than ever before <laughs> You know, it's, exactly. it, it, oh the unfortunate thing is then when we're connecting health with profit and symptom treatment makes a lot more money than just telling people what's actually wrong, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and, and then if you tell me as a customer that you, you told me, oh, this is pretty fast, Nick, you could be a uh, glass glasses free or not, not need any glasses in three years. To me, that's reasonable. That's like, okay, wow. Three years to transform my eyesight. It's actually very exciting, but a lot of people are looking for magic fixes and they would say three years. I want three minutes, three minutes. Just give me contact lenses or glasses. Right. So it's also like very sexy as a solution or as something of a, of a magic pill. Like I, my eyesight is bad. Now it's good. Fixed. The problem is fixed, but I'm, I'm someone who looks into like long-term solutions. So Lately, what I did is is these. I, I got the Invisalign. I'm almost done with the treatment, and my I did my those teeth too. my teeth were I completely. I mean, it, it were. I was almost like I, I sometimes joke. I, I was uh, almost looking like someone from the UK, and not to bash. <laughs> it's like I mean, I had very bad teeth. I, I had like, and that's just I don't know. Like, is it sometimes people th think think about like nutritional deficiencies in, in the mother. And I don't know why I developed it. Like my jaw was too small. I don't know why, but they were able to fix it, but it took several months. Still, it's, it's somewhat of a miracle. And why I did that is aesthetics, but I think that's a second um, a concern for me. The first one was, well, my teeth are kind of hitting each other and now they're, they're all getting chipped and, and like, 
what's going to happen when I'm 60 and 70? Like, am I go going to eventually lose my teeth and have to, to have other solutions installed? And I'm like, ah, that's actually like I'm 34 and I should take preventative measures. So now you got me interested in, okay, what are the consequences of wearing these glasses for 40 more years? And will I suffer in my old age of premature degeneration or eventually there's like an upper limit in how myopic you can be or uh, so can can we can we safely say that this entire bandwagon of myopia and glasses and making the myopia worse and then even stronger glasses is it contributing to people that have eyesight problems later in life it's contributing to everything it's by the way just just before i forget i, I did invisalign too Number one, you want to wear retainers because otherwise your teeth are going to want to go back to their old shape. Yeah. And also Mike Mew, M-E-W, he is one of the, uh, like an orthodontist that talks about why your teeth got crooked in the first place. Mm. Super interesting. I started chewing dog chew toys because I did Invisalign and there's a lot of discussion of your teeth are crooked because you're not biting things. Okay. We need to be chewing and biting and because our foods are too soft, Again, like everything you look into, the solution is always like, a, we're not using the thing as intended. Yeah. So it's not working as intended. And then they give you a fix that, yeah, they don't really tell you the causality. So I'd recommend looking into that because long-term, you don't want to wear retainers forever. So strengthening yeah. the, the, yeah, all the stuff. Anyway. Um, I'll check it out. Yeah. Lots of rabbit holes. So the, the eyesight thing, the three years part, I agree. It sounds too long. It, I think it's more interesting in terms of your eyes will be better if you have a healthier lifestyle as far as your eyesight is concerned. And for a lot of people, that means I, had, I just have so many conversations with people that go, well, I want better eyesight, but part of the requirement for you to improve your eyesight is you need distance vision time, right? Like you need two, three, four hours a day of looking in the distance, doing stuff, not eye exercises, but you need a hobby an activity, a series of things that you do every day that get you away from screens. We're working, right? Like we're looking at screens. When you're done with work, what do you do, right? Like is the recreation YouTube and Netflix and Facebook or, which is fine, right? Like part of life, but is there also, I'm playing with my kids. I'm fixing up a motorbike. I'm going water skiing. I don't know. Stop. Yeah. And your eyesight improving is like a secondary benefit to you going, hey, if you live a life that is fulfilling and you're seeing things and you're experiencing things, your eyesight will also improve with minor intervention. Like and myopia is like Invisalign in a lot of ways in that we're, the super, super short version is, you're going to wear slightly weaker glasses, making your eyes readjust and correct themselves very gradually. Every three to four months, you wear slightly weaker glasses. Just like every so often you change the Invisalign retainer to, to put the shape back yeah. kind of actively. The glasses act in a similar way, except they're just providing the stimulus for your eyes to go back to, your eyes are perfectly healthy, right? Like you're not genetically defective. They're just misaligned because of the lenses and they're strained because of the excess close-up. So if you reduce the strain, which strategically you can do, even though you're still doing a lot of close-up time, and then you fix the problem of the lens overcorrection, it's not that it'll take three years, it's within three years of you making adjustments that you should be making anyway, your eyes will also tell you, hey, this is a good direction for me. Mm. Right. So it's, it's more that than you're not putting three years of work. You're just making adjustments. It's like, if you make diet adjustments and you're healthy, you know, it's, it's not, I want to lose this weight in five minutes. It's I, looking back, I'm healthier and in better shape than I was before. And I also lost weight. So it's a similar sort of plus every three to four months, you're wearing weaker glasses and that's exciting. Like it's super empowering. Number one, buying your own glasses, measuring yourself. You can measure your vision yourself. Super easy to do, super instructive, not having to rely on the optometrist, getting that agency back where you're like, I can, 
you learn how to do it. It's not that difficult. And then the first time you order glasses and the first time you take them out of the box and you put them on and you have an eye chart, that experiment of like, huh, it's interesting. Jake said, I'm going to see the same with a quarter to opt less. And I do. Right. And then it kind of starts a journey of unraveling this dependence that people created for you that you didn't understand at all. So it's three years, but it's a whole lot of excitement and pride of just going, I'm not dependent on these things. And my relationship with my biology is different, right? Like I'm not deficient or broken in some way. Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, um, same thing for people who, I mean, I, I do, I do see the place for medical doctors in a lot of things, but some people, for example, if they're, they're always, always on uh, relying on meds and they have like, let's say type two diabetes or pre-diabetes, well, there's a lot you can do by yourself. And, and, and even medical doctors, some, some of them have published protocols where, I don't know, you do ketogenic diet for a few months and some people successfully reverse their dependence on insulin and things like that. So it, you, you can work with medical doctors, but there's always ways to um, get off meds or there's not always, but in a lot of situations, you can minimize the amount of medications you're taking and, and, and get your different bodily systems back to where they should be. So that's, I think that's kind of the idea. And uh, so, so what's the, I guess you, you, you have all of this on your website, so we're going to have links to all of that, but what's the short story of uh, the short version of how the protocols that you have developed work and uh, how did you come up with those? I guess it was a, a mix of uh, trial and error, but is there a, something in particular that inspired you to, to, to develop the protocol for yourself and then uh, inspire others to try it too? It's, it's all the wisdom from my beard, from my <laughs> glorious, glorious beard. Um, I make a, there's a lot of jokes on the website because I'm not selling stuff and I'm not trying to be famous. I don't care. So it's a lot of, for anybody who visits it, it's going to go, what is with this dude? Um, one of the ongoing jokes is I'm the last living eye guru and I have an amazing beard and I'm making fun of institutionalized trust, right? Like because the dude has a title and wears a white coat we just trust him and it's, yeah. it's just me going don't don't trust me because i claim to be a bearded eye guru don't trust the doctor because right the coat and the title yeah. um when i read the biology which explained that my eye elongated and my muscle was strained i was i, I figured there's nothing new under the sun right somebody figured this out somebody wrote a book i'm going to read the book i'm going to i'm going to read the book so i read all the books because I didn't want to come up with a thing, right? And Bates method and eye yoga and eye exercises. I went to Nepal and got eye acupuncture. I had a lot of time on my hands. I made money and I just played around. <laughs> because I figured that the biology explains that there's nothing wrong. So I'm like, the fix is somebody has figured it out, right? Like, it's not, why would I be the guy? Like, that's a ridiculous notion. Yeah. I couldn't find anything that I've got was working. And I couldn't find anything that addressed causality. I'm like, we understand strain and we understand elongated eyeball. So I'm looking for answers, addressing the strain, addressing the eyeball length. And mm -hmm. I couldn't find those. So I set off on an experiment and that was a terrible idea. I tell everybody, all the stuff on the website is free and, and people should be extremely happy that they didn't go through my learning curve because I guessed and my guesses were super far off 24 20 years ago the way we came up with what we're doing today is many thousands of people over the years trying stuff i had early ideas that i put online and then friends and friends of friends and random people would try things what i said try different things tweaking stuff so it just it's many many years of messing around with it so where we're at today i'm sort of proud of it because it's so easy and so minimal effort and so not what it was when I started. Um, I remember I threw away my minus five diopter glasses and I bought a pair of minus three diopter glasses because the argument being the axial length, I want the eyeball to get shorter. For the eyeball to get shorter, I need to have light hit in front of the retina instead of behind it. Yeah. So I'm like minus three, there we go. It was a you know, somebody who had no idea what they're doing. I bought these minus three glasses and it was while I was traveling. And after I bought them, I went to Laos 
And it turns out you cannot wear minus three glasses when you need minus five glasses <laughs> because you can't see anything further than a few meters, right? Like, so I threw them away. I paid 700 euros for those freaking things. And I, I was so committed that I threw them away and I was in Laos just blind. So that was fun. I, I beautiful. Though. It, it was a beautiful travel, but you don't remember any of it. Like I didn't see the mountains, right? <laughs> I remember a lot of it, but it was a lot of just, I would get on the back of a little motorbike where the guy's like, I'll take you to a hotel. And I'm like, well, I hope so, because I'm not going to find it by myself. Incredible. The, the short version, again, it's kind of like telling you go to the gym, lift weights to get stronger level. But for you, for example, at minus 2.75, go online and buy yourself a pair of glasses that are about one diopter to 1.25 diopters lower than your current correction. It's, it's not really the place to start. The place to start is a bit more research and measuring and stuff, but you can shortcut it. Just buy yourself a diopter and a quarter lower glasses. Same everything else, change nothing else. The same ratio, the same everything. When you start to use a computer, don't put on the glasses you're wearing now at all, right? First, just see what you can read on the screen. A book is even better, more relaxed, no backlights, no pixels, no glowing stuff. A book that you can, at minus two, you can read at about 50 centimeter distance because diopters are just inverse meters. So the optometrist doesn't tell you how diopters work, but it's just a hundred divided by the distance. So- okay. 100 divided by 50 is two. So if you need two diopter glasses, you can see up to 50 centimeters perfectly clearly. So that's all you need to know. I know at minus 2.75, at about 40 centimeters, you can hold a book and read it just fine. It's yeah, I, usually in the evening I read books, but I feel more comfortable when I get them off. So usually right. I do that. Like a magician, I can tell you when you need glasses, right? Like I just know. <laughs> Yeah. You can figure out the same stuff. So you're about 40 centimeters. You're good, right? Like 35, 40, depending on lighting, the better the light is, the further you can see clearly you start there. And then you put on those, uh, diopter and a quarter less glasses. We call them differentials, just glasses for reading distance, computer distance. Those allow you to see clearly computer distance, 60, 65, 70 centimeters, but not further. So unlike the glasses you're currently wearing that you already noticed are uncomfortable when you're reading a book because they're way overpowered. They're, yeah. they're causing a huge amount of eye strain that you're habituated to. So you don't realize that you have it. If you stop wearing these glasses, your full power glasses for your computer work for a month and just wear the diopter lower correction. If after a month, if you ever put on the full power glasses for computer use, you're immediately going to feel nauseous. <laughs> It is yeah. because the strain level is just dramatic. It's really not cool. Once you get used to the, the lower strain level, like the glass is only correct to the computer screen distance, your eyes will be so much happier, so much less strain. You will never go back to wearing full power, maximum distance correction to look at a computer screen. That's the first step. If you never do anything else, if you only do that, your vision will not get worse. The, the reason the power keeps going up is because we where distance correction and close up gotcha. for, for everybody that's into just listening to this because they like tech and they're still listening because for whatever reason, buy yourself adopter, adopter, a quarter lower glasses and just enjoy much more relaxed eyes. You need that for the strain reduction. Then you buy yourself an eye chart. Eye charts are an amazing thing because it, that your eyesight fluctuates after a four hour Netflix binge on an iPad, your eyesight's going to be noticeably worse. And if you have an eye chart, you can compare before and after. And the comparison that you're making is actually muscle strain, mm. right? Like yeah. if you go hiking, if you're having a super relaxed day, it's nice ambient lighting, lighting plays a big role. And you look at the chart, you're going to see a smaller line clearly than after you ate a bunch of carbs and you have an insulin spike and you're sitting in narrow spectrum artificial light and you just watch four hours of netflix you're going to see half of that chart less wow so it's like a scale for your weight the eye chart will tell you how relaxed are my eyes at the current moment how good is the lighting how good is my diet it'll it'll fluctuate so 
you wear lower power glass for close up and you print an eye chart to familiarize yourself with how are my Netflix binge habits affecting my sight. Yeah. yeah. And that, that way you can track your progress also. You can track your progress and you just kind of become more familiar where, you know, you look at the chart and the whole freaking thing is blurry when you could read half of it before you're like, okay, whatever I just did was probably not great for my eyes. Gotcha. Quantifying the strain in a way that, that you can clearly see without guessing is super helpful. And then you do that. And for a month, you do nothing else. You just wear lower power, power glasses for your computer time. Always, always, always. And you just casually have an eye chart. After about a month, you, your eyes are more relaxed. You have a pretty good idea of how you get along with the lower power glasses. Sometimes you forget to take them off. You walk around your house with a dot and a quarter less. And you're like, well, I can still see to the opposite wall just fine. I can recognize my kids. I don't really need full power glasses today. You're having these experiences that are much more, you're, you're seeing what the envelope is of your eyesight. And at that point, you can go, okay, I have minus 2.75 distance vision. How about if I go to minus 2.5? And then you take a relaxed Sunday, a day that you don't need to drive or go anywhere. You order minus 2.5. They arrive, you put them on the... You don't wear them yet. You just leave them there till that Sunday comes. That Sunday, you don't wear glasses at all. You just, just have an hour or two or three of, with minus 2.75 at home, you can get away with it. Till you're just, just like, I'm over this experience. And then you put on a minus 2.5. You have the eye chart. You know what you're doing. Your vision will feel exactly the same as I do with a minus 2.75. If you follow this approach, First, you re relax your eyes, you have an eye chart, you kind of stop doing things that are terrible for you. Then you take some time not wearing the stronger ones. So your visual cortex doesn't have a reference. It doesn't go, oh, this is not as strong as the other ones. You remove that reference. So you just have a blurrier morning. And then you pop on those minus 2.5, you will not be able to tell the difference until watching movies at night or driving at night or just bad lighting situations, you may go back to the minus 2.75, but daytime will make no difference. Three to four months from now, that minus 2.5 is going to really be exactly as the minus 2.75 is today. And then you do the same thing again. You reduce your reading glasses by quarter adopter and you reduce your distance glass by quarter adopter. And you'll have that same experience again, slightly less perfect vision in challenging environments. A few months pass and you're right back to where you were before. Just like the Invisalign, your these gradual reductions along with just better habits will wean you off the adopter dependence. Like I said, about three years, you're going to be over them. Well, and as far as technicalities goes, um, to minimize costs, what do you recommend or what do you see members doing? Do they buy like one frame and then they just purchase the glasses or the, the lens and they replace them or... You kind of need a few thousand dollars because you know you're, you're going to be replacing glasses every four months. That's really my big concern is kind of budget here, to be honest. So that's a great, I would have forgotten about this. It's a hundred billion dollar industry because for various reasons, one of them being those lovely lenses that you have in your glasses, wholesale cost to the optometrist is two to five dollars or euros. Seven if you get all the coatings and the high-end brand. Not two, not double digits. Like nine would be insane. Like I don't even know. That would have to be high index stuff. But the stuff you're wearing right now, I think cost the optometrist maybe six-ish euro or dollar for both of them. So the the, the markup is incredible. The profit margin markup is incredible. Average is five thousand <laughs> percent. I had no There's idea. A, oh my god. You go, if you type in Google LA Times lens crafters scandal, there is a big optical chain in the US and some of the executives left and told the LA Times the whole story of how lens crafters operates, including how they push people into buying glasses, including these stories about profit margins. I have all the price sheets, like optometrists send me all the price sheets for every brand of, of lens. Two bucks is pretty common. And the difference between all the coatings and none of the coatings is pennies. 
you know, 50, 50 cents. Like it's not whenever they're like, well, for $50, we can also give you the anti-glare code. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all profit. It's all profit. So the short version is I love to support local businesses personally. So when I was working on this, I would always find a friendly, I would look for an optometrist. My story was always glasses give me headaches. When I, a computer glass, I need computer glasses. My litmus test for is somebody going to be cool is walking into shop at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. It's not busy. And I just go, hey, I lost, dog ate my computer glasses. Will you make me new ones? And if they say, nope, only full power, then I'm out of there. I find an optometrist says like, well, fine, I'll make you some. Depending on the country, like the UK, I never had any luck. In Italy, everybody was like, whatever you want, we don't care. In Germany, Fielmann would, would you could buy glass, uncut lenses on eBay and they would just cut them for, it for you if you buy uh, frames from them. Wow. I like the local optometrist because I like to support local business. They got a lot of fancy gear for testing. You want them cut perfect. You want to test frames. To me, it was always worth it to go support local optometrist. And my thing was always, I didn't make them, I didn't force them to believe in something that they don't believe in. Right. Yeah. So I was just like computer glasses where you make them for me. And then I would show up with coffee and donuts at 11 and be like, look, I'm a little weird. Every three or four months, I buy new glasses for whatever reason. I scratch them up. I beat them up. The dog eats them a lot. Can we make some kind of, will you make me a deal? Right. I always buy computer glasses, always buy distance glasses. And then it's hit or miss and it's a project. And most people don't do this. Most people go in the U S to zenny.com. And in Europe, there's a bunch of different companies that are basically Chinese importers you know, and they charge you $20 or euros for a pair of glasses instead of 300. And they still make a ton of profit and you just order the stuff online. It's dirt cheap. Yeah. That's the easy answer. I prefer like, if I find a good local optometrist, I prefer to support the guy. If he's willing to make me a deal, you know what I mean? If I can buy mm -hmm. frames and glasses for, you know, 30, $40 or euros, he's still making good money. Um, then he can just cut me new lenses. So I don't need to change the frames. If you're buying online, you need to buy the whole thing again. Okay. Um, but budget is a minor concern because on average, if you buy them online, you're spending $20 euros on a pair of glasses complete. And if you're doing it locally, you're just changing the lenses out. So in that case, every four months, it's like over a little bit over a hundred dollars per year, which is, I mean, I spent, I spent, I spent that on one single supplement per year. So yeah, it's, it's super worth it. And just for the experience of that, there's a lot that happens to you psychologically weaning yourself off of that. But I've just seen this so many times. I used to not think about it. I got into paragliding and I kite surf. And I used to be the dude who would not, I thought I had two left feet. I'm clumsy. Kids used to make fun of me. Once you are less dependent on these things, your visual cortex does something to your brain, flipping a switch going, all right, fine. You know, they're taking the, the child wheels off the bicycle and you have better balance. You move better. You just, when you're wearing glasses, you have this weird relationship with people where you look through the center of the lens. So your, your eye movement and your neck movement and your head movement is not correct. Mm. So you seem slightly weird. People just say, oh, he's a nerd. But you just, you're kind of like, you're more rigid then somebody who doesn't wear glasses. It, there's so many little incremental effects on reducing the dependence on those things that improve your life worth more than the hundred bucks you might be spending on having that experience. Yeah, and most of all, yeah. I, and there's probably, I would argue, a thousand other factors that are beneficial to not rely on glasses but we'll discover them in the next hundred years. And that's how it goes in research. It's always like, oh, there's a new organ. What? Are you kidding me? Every time I see the, these kind of things like, oh yeah, it turns out, you know, uh, we have a glymphatic system and the brain detoxes at night, 2015. And I'm like, I'm in shock about what they still discover about like, yeah, there's kind of this organ we thought was completely useless. Turns out it's not. I'm like, okay, oh my God. In that case, we got to be careful about what we believe is uh, the ultimate truth today because it might evolve. So 
generally speaking, I like these approaches. Like, I don't know, I follow the dark horse podcast where there, there are these uh, evolutionary biologists where they say, well, if you do any intervention, you should try to go back to how things were in nature because you're that much more likely to be right because this is how we're built. And as you said, the genes didn't change in 50 years. So what are the benefits of not relying on these? Well, they're probably countless and we probably forget a bunch of things exactly of how like i don't know like like you said the devil the brain development even next train i don't know like so many aspects because we are not born to have these and that's quite it's, simple Rand, i could i could go on for days just just a random one uh you don't have peripheral vision right now your your vision stops here anxiety there's the part of your visual cortex goes if a tiger is sneaking up on you right now you are not seeing it Right? Yeah, this low grade anxiety that's just you're not even aware of anymore. That's just that's just kind of in the background where your brain's like, I'm not comfortable anywhere because this I can't see any of this stuff. And I'm supposed to have I can see both of my hands right now at 180 degrees. Right. Like not well, obviously, but I have more vision than you do with this frame cutting off your your your, you know, when you walk with glasses, you have to look at the ground you don't have peripheral vision i don't have to look at the ground but because here the vision stops here by your nose anybody who has glasses is following the ground with the eyes when they walk it's small stuff but your 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 motion through all of life is different than mm. a person that contact wow. lenses will do but there's just the list of the things where if you're talking like i agree with the evolutionary biology guys is there are too many things to even fathom that are being messed up by a yeah. thing that you can easily fix, you know? Well, exactly. So if it's a, it just looks like a crutch that uh, is making things worse. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I don't, I don't like my glasses after listening to you for an hour, to be honest. I'm like, well, uh, one thing, one thing is sure. I'm going to start uh, working on that for sure. And that's, how, that's already something I had started working on. And something that I, I did is I had this habit of whenever in a, I, I'm in a coffee shop, Every 30 minutes or so, I leave everything there and eventually I'll get my computer stolen because I also travel a lot, but who cares? I'm just like outside the coffee shop and then I remove my glasses and I just look at stuff outside, like kind of like distance vision. So that's already start something I started. And the year after I started that, I, I went basically back by minus uh, 20, uh, 0.25. Um, so they started getting better. And my, my eye doctor was like, I don't know what you're doing. And, uh, but, uh, it works. So keep doing it. <laughs> like they were very, very surprised. Yeah. It's, it's a weird, you're on the right track and you're going to feel so much better. I'm telling you a minus 2.5 is going to be so much better. Number one, not wearing the full power for computer use is going to be a revelation. Like you will never go back to wearing full power glasses during computer use. And for that outdoor time, when you're just walking away from your computer and you, you need a little bit of, of stimulus, of challenge, you don't want full power. You know what I mean? You want, yeah. you want to back it off just a tiny bit. So there's clear and then there's a little tiny bit of blur, not a lot, but something that your eye can focus on and work on and clear up so much nicer, right? Like there's no, once you do the first set, of a close-up glasses and, and reduced distance glasses, there is no going back. Like there are rarely people that have started this who have not followed it all the way through because it's so, you feel so much better. And after three or four months, that, that benefit's kind of gone. And then you're like, ah, let's do that again. You know? Yeah. I don't know yeah. why I'm selling it. I always feel stupid because I'm like, this should just be stuff that people should want to do anyway. But I'm also like, come on, like you're not realizing how much better, like, there's a, there's a guy whose podcast I did, who's got a huge podcast, actually. He was wearing uh, uh, glasses for distance vision, Brad Kearns. And um, he had presbyopia because in he's in his 50s. So he can't read up close yeah. anymore either. So he, was, he would wear one pair of glasses that is like uh, multifocal. So up, you look up, you see at a distance, you look down, you see up close. And we just had, you know, it was a podcast conversation, whatever. And I do, I've done a hundred something podcasts, but we kind of kept in touch. Today, he's an avid golfer, doesn't need glasses for anything. Wow. 
not for reading, not for distance, not for anything. And he's kind of become a huge fan of the thing. And I'm excited because I'm like, that's, you have so many conversations with people. And I'm like, dude, this would change your stuff. You like golf. You, you're an active guy. It is so limiting to not be able to see anything without corrective lenses. And he went out and did something about it. And yeah, it's changed the game, right? And especially yeah. at that age, 50, if you can't see anything anymore, you age, you know, because you're, you become this overly aware of how your body is not, is betraying you kind of, right? You can't read the menu. And people are like, when you pull out those glasses, you know, the, your kids make fun of you. Like none of that's any good. And yeah. entirely preventable, largely. Yeah, that's incredible. So uh, where can people find you? And you said everything is free. I see there, there are courses also that you offered in the past or groups. And so what are you offering? What are the resources where people can start reading more in depth, including myself after this interview? Because I'll, I'll, I'll get into it. So endmyopia.org. It's, it's a gigantic site. Just a word of warning. I always say, Consider it a little bit of research project. There's going to be a month of a learning curve. It's a rabbit hole. We've got a large Facebook group with 20 some odd thousand members. We've got a okay. forum, 90,000. We have a terrible YouTube channel. Um, we've, got, we've got all kinds of this. There's, there's a bazillion research on the site. There's over 1,200 articles that I've written, how-to guides and things, improvement reports. We have a podcast where people talk about their own vision improvement experiences. There's a ton of stuff. It's not incredibly well organized and it's full of weird human rants because it's, it's, it's not a business for me. It's just something I enjoy doing. Yeah. We did and do have courses, but they're generally always full because I only do a few a year. It's my way to test things and have a structured approach and figure out a lot of the things I put into free materials. It's also people who help pay all the million bills that end myopia causes. I don't promise courses to be available. I don't really promote this stuff. Gotcha. If you look on the courses page, most of them are not available. Okay. Um, there's an email guide. That's a good starting point. It's seven days of start with this first and then keep working your way down. Um, there's a wiki that is created by the community. That's got a few hundred articles that takes out all the jokes and humor and just compresses and myopia into just you type whatever you think about in the search box and you get answers um, that with a facebook group generally super helpful awesome well thank you so much for for taking the time today this is fascinating and i if i recall correctly i heard you on the maybe myers detox podcast i cannot exactly recall and then your team reached out to me i'm not i'm not even sure uh, but uh, this is fascinating and I'm glad you did because aside from a few people talking about anecdotes and the Bates method and eye nutrients and a few things where I was like, eh, is that really fixing the root cause? I, oh, I think, I think we just opened another rabbit hole, but I mean, I mean, no, yeah, it doesn't fix the, the root cause. If, if the root cause is your, your, your eyes are strained, you're looking at a computer too much and you're wearing glasses, making things worse. You can take uh, lutein and I don't know what, but what what's it going to do, right? So uh, I think your approach is root cause. It's it's very, very smart. And uh, and at the same time, you're not selling anything. So it's uh, it's incredible. I'm 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 so grateful you're doing all this work. Yeah. And it's the, the payment is I say terrible things and make terrible jokes and I appreciate the updates and it introduced me to so much cool stuff. It, you know, like it, yeah, I'm not even going to go down those rabbit holes, but things like the Invisalign, Mike Mew, like heart disease, there's all kinds of stuff. Now I'm digging around to EMF things, things that I would have never done if I didn't become part of this kind of community of people that, that dig for more truth. Yeah. And self-experimenters. That's, that's what I like yes. about it. And yeah, some people, the biohacking movement, sometimes it gets a little bit like, oh, people who, who use a, a thousand different supplements, a thousand different devices per day. But at the same time, the good thing about it is empowering you to just do your experiments, try things, and also not, not believe too much people who tell you, okay, you have a diagnosis and you're stuck with XYZ, including myopia, turns out. And I, it was not in my... Um, 
in the things I considered possibilities in my life to fix my myopia. Whereas Invisalign, I was kind of, kind of convinced when the, when the doctor told me, okay, your teeth are going to be straight. I'm like, okay, this works. I, I have no doubt. But if you told me, okay, you can reverse your myopia hundred percent, it would have been like, uh, that's not, it really, that's not the paradigm at the moment. It's like, oh no, this is not fixable. So I can't wait to um, come back to you, maybe interview you again when I'm going to be free from these glasses. And then, well, I'm going to share that with my community because so many people can benefit from that. So um, thanks again for, for being here. We're going to share all your links in the show notes and uh, hopefully an update a few years from now when I'm going to be uh, free from my glasses. Sweet. I really, please remember to do that because I would love that. Whenever people do that, there's a lot of those on the site too, that people that recover, that makes it all worth it. So I hope you remember. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Thank you so Thanks, much. Nate.